I think the honorable thing for our species to do is deny our programming. Stop reproducing. Walk hand in hand into extinction. One last midnight, brothers and sisters opting out of a raw deal. If we do not trust any friends or family members. I repeat, do not trust Chupacabra, yeah, article, yeah. or, you know, the yeah. Yeti. Um, yeah, but yeah. not quite, but not quite keeping, you know, keeping the chemtrails out, just keeping it right on the level, you know? Yeah. Yeah. You don't. Yeah. There's no astral projection. There's no, there's no, there's no aliens. That's for sure. Hey, uh, just, I meant to tell classic, you, Oh, one of my friends at work, uh, he brought up, uh, um, Salvia today. Oh, this. <laughs> my guy, my guy, my guy, when he was growing up. Um, yeah. apparently like, like to take the ride okay all right i wonder how that worked because like you know obviously we never got it to properly work except he, the- no he said it wasn't hot enough he said the the key thing was the was the heat like a real hot bong like a and, and then he said it's like a three minute ride uh-huh he, he said it's a three minute ride feels like it could take a year in some cases and he said it and 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 it's and it's he said there's like stages and uh, the third stage, almost always you encounter elves. My, my goodness. Okay, so he's uh, in, oh, in a three-minute period. I find yes. that very difficult to believe, but... Well, it I'll, feels much stretched out. Oh, I'm sure it does. Yeah, like, time dilation's a real thing. I mean, anyone who's been, like, super high and, like, realized that the last hour was, in fact, only ten minutes, you know, knows what that's like. But... um. Yeah. yeah, I don't know. I just can't believe that Salvia would do that because like it was like obviously it had a weird effect, but OK, just not hot enough. huh? All right, yeah. listeners. Uh, <laughs> get, uh, get your Salvia. You got your missions. You the know, podcast you it took up. a turn yeah. today. <laughs> <laughs> well, in it, when Grant Morrison was uh, trying to advertise the Invisibles, like when it was threatening, uh, threatened to be canceled, he in his letters column, he had everybody jerk off and commit like a like a magic spell uh he was like let's do a wankathon and you know that worked so like uh-huh. we're gonna do a salvathon or oh, something wow. yeah 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 and then so <laughs> everybody go on a salvia um journey and yeah. then uh and it's then only tell three minutes about long. Our podcast yeah it's, it's only three minutes long it's victimless yeah it's, uh, no it's fine yeah just let us send take us the ride yeah. <laughs> and if you do get to the elves please yeah contact us you know what they called salvia trips? There's another name for them. They, they, they call them the long Halloween. Um, oh, I yeah. like that. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's something they call it. Uh, just like, coincidentally, the topic of today's conversation. Uh, hi, everybody. Extinction Agenda with James and James. Uh, today, we're doing Batman the Long Halloween. Um, a 13-issue miniseries that ran from December of 1996 to December of 1997. Um, Jeff Loeb, Tim Sale, uh, Gregory Wright doing the colors, Richard Starkins doing the letters. We got, like, this is an A group, except for Jeff Loeb. Um, <laughs> well, I don't know. Yeah, we're going to get into that. But Jeff, Jeff I looked the... up, I was like, what else is Jeff Loeb doing at this time? Like, where, where, is he popping anywhere else? And like, Cable? Spoilers, yeah, exactly. He's writing Cable at the same time. Was he's writing... he actually? Yeah, yeah. Um, what? Hold on, let me confirm on that. Yeah, he's writing Cable at this time. I'm, I'm pretty sure of it. Um, he's doing some random X Men stuff. He's done. Uh, he's one of the books that we're going to be doing for our character study uh, announcement. Everyone, we're going to be doing uh, the history of Cable at some point oh. soon. And uh, Jeff Loeb's got his hand in that at this time. Uh. He, yeah, he's, you know, I don't know. I don't expect, like, I really don't expect much from the writer of Commando and Teen Wolf. Uh, and that's rude. it's something about, yeah, something about Tim Sale, though, brings out the absolute best in him. Because uh, I, I think this is good. I think this is good stuff. But like everything this else. This is very close to, um, like, this is similar to, like, maybe the Jim Lee effect or something. It's like when, if you get Jim Lee. You you have to uh, fucking pump out the best load. Yeah, the I don't best think you we, got. Maybe maybe he's just ramped up. You know, maybe he knows. He knows what he's got here, and he's just no, dialed we, up. 
we know what happened. Well, actually, well, we're going to, you know, that reminds me that we're going to tackle Batman Hush because we're going to see if the Jim Lee effect applies in that instance. Oh, uh, perfect. Yeah. Yeah. But I did like, I don't, I don't recollect that it did. Uh, I think, but I'm, I'm excited to get to that after we get through the, the Jeff Loeb, Tim Sale, Batman universe, uh, which I, it's, I feel like we're kind of, we've committed to after having read this. Cause uh yeah, I don't like. I already said it's good. I'm I'm gonna keep, repeat that it's good, and I I think I I want to get at why. Like some of it, it's a fucking hot mess though. Um, well, we know why. It's because of the the Jeff Loeb writing method. <laughs> yeah, but I was sharing. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so I've got uh, what do I have here? Writers on comic book screenwriting, uh, by edited by Mark Salisbury, and he uh, he did interviews with a, a bunch of people. Uh, prominent names in the industry garth ennis you got neil gaiman dan jurgens oh shit i didn't read the dan jurgens one fuck oh uh, yeah no. yeah todd the todd man shows up in here anyway and so does Jeff the todd father oh yeah yeah I mean, you want to find out what he thinks of comic book screenwriting he probably wipes his ass with it this is what I think <laughs> <laughs> never, yeah. never miss an opportunity yeah. <laughs> a shot at todd <laughs> So, yeah, what, so how his, like, okay, well, this story, he says in this interview, like, basically, it was set up in a certain way, and then he started fucking around with it, as he, as, like, according to the reaction of the fans, it was supposed to be Calendar Man, who did all the murders the entire way. Oh. Uh, well, I mean, like, like that was the first thing, and so then he, he kind of had to shift from that, because editorial was like, well, we can't have it be Calendar Man. Um yeah, because there was some sort of weird continuity thing or something. I don't know. Who gives a shit about Calendar? This is the best Calendar Man story that ever did happen. And it's it, true. And, that... and Calendar Man doesn't do anything. <laughs> Calendar and 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 like a uh, sorry, but like I, I have a suspicion that if you strip this script away from hmm. what I'm going to say is probably one of the best illustrated short like like short series runs that. <laughs> i've ever seen almost Mm -hmm. um that that you got a real real fucking shit bag there's like atypical gangster shit uh Mm -hmm. batman batman runs into catwoman over and over again and nothing happens gangsters get murdered other gangster stuff happens and then batman talks to calendar man they nickname the killer holiday who kills someone on holidays and then they just mm-hmm. go from holiday to holiday with no real um and one of my other big beefs is that there's no hints like i i, I didn't pick up anything that was a discernible trail to who holiday is it. yeah yeah so this yeah this, i think you kind of hit the nail on the head like um, it's a murder mystery in which you could never have solved it. You know, at the end, you you kind of like scratch your head and you're like, okay, I guess that kind of makes sense to the extent. Like, I, and another thing, I don't think the mystery makes any sense at the end. Like uh, the final revelation, and this book's from a million years ago, so if anyone's pissed off about spoilers, go fuck yourself. Um, yeah. The uh, it like it's it's Harvey Dent's wife and Harvey Dent and also maybe Alberto Falcone. Uh, who did the murders and like, you know, there's lots, I went and looked fishing around and trying to see how people make sense of this. Um, Gilda Dent's wife killed the first two people is, is uh, a credible theory. And then Alberto takes it cause she gets bombed. Right. So she ends up in a hospital bed, so she can't murder no more. Uh, and then, so I guess Alberto Falcone takes over at that point, fakes his own death. Why he does that? Who fucking knows? Um, <laughs> and uh, and then murders a bunch of people to the end, and then I think Harvey Dent is the uh, the last thing or something like that. Anyway, and, and but none of that's in the book. You get to the end and you're like, "What? Man, this comic was cool." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just like it's a complete smokescreen on the fact that I just, like there's there's enough like fucking there's a, some really nice touches in this even in the dialogue like the the oh and, yeah and it's such a smooth are, flow yeah. yeah the dialogue's great the like the, the falcon family the di- the dynamics between everyone 
Um, mm. And the turf war is it's just excellent. So much fun. Um, and and it's just, uh, but like, the ki- that's the killer thing is that like in, I mean, shit, man, even in Harry Potter, if you're careful, you can patch certain things together. Uh, there we go. <laughs> and, 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 and that's that's not a good story. Um, yeah. Oh whoa! Took a shot there, but well, yeah. Anyway, oh, I think well, <laughs> there are different types of story. I, I agree with you that at least with um, with what's her nose, uh, J.K. Rowling. Yeah, you can definitely you you can pick it up, you know, and you can get, yeah, get, get as mad as you want, but there were hints. Yeah, yeah, and it was there in the end, and you were like, oh, okay, well, sure, you know, and actually even. Even as as the series, you know, this isn't a Harry Potter story. We'll we'll move off this in a second. <laughs> even though I, don't you just love Harry Potter? The even by book six or whatever, like the stuff that is getting picked up from book one or two or uh, who knows, right? But uh, I'm like, oh, okay, yeah, I'm seeing how this is all uh, a rich tapestry. There's a mind that was at play and kind of had these these like like set themselves up, uh, Chris Claremont style. Um, little pieces to leave behind, but. This yeah, the yeah. long Halloween, I don't feel like had that. Despite having a, a very nice flow, a very nice yeah. flow, very linear flow. Also, great. I don't know. I don't know how. I don't know what your take on is, this is, but great delivery of Batman. Um, oh, I think so. Yeah, yeah. I, I think that's the. It, it's a. It's a fine Batman. It's a real. Uh, it, it's a real detective Batman even though he's a little bit inept at detecting. But it's not his fault. He's <laughs> he's trying to fucking catch three different murders. <laughs> so, I mean, you can't really blame him for getting hung up a little bit. Um, yeah, and one his, of them's uh, his best friend is, like, Man Crush or whatever. And, um, yeah. I, I well, Not just a good Batman, a good Bruce Wayne, and a good Catwoman, and a good Selina Kyle. And yeah. you great Jim Gordon, you know, like all the characters are the characters as you know, and want them to be except for the Joker. I could, I don't care for this kind of depiction of the Joker. No, Solomon Grundy got more respect than the Joker did. Yeah. (laughs) And uh, frankly, I could have done with a lot less Solomon Grundy, but I don't mind when he shows up because everybody loves him for some reason. I'm like, okay, great. Uh, but yeah, this thing gets by on atmosphere. It gets by on, Tim Sale's phenomenal art, uh, Greg Greg Wright's excellent coloring. You know, like this is this oh, is yeah. the full package, and and the lettering's good too. Richard Starkings, you know, like like it's a full comics experience, um, and it has a lot of heart, and and frankly is like. I don't know. I'm I like I'm reading this and I'm like, what is happening? Like, there's that that Poison Ivy shows up and she's doing the thing and. Um, oh yeah, she has she has Wayne sell out to Falcone. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and then that that's a nice little touch. That was a nice move. And then Catwoman. Mm. Yeah, I I had a little bit of a hard time with Catwoman's motivation. There's no motivation for her to be involved in any of this outside of like pure voyeurism. That that yeah. piece I could have used like some like uh, what do you call that? What? Explanation. Uh, yeah, or or yeah. A motive. <laughs> like, what's the yeah, motive? Yeah, yeah. Like, you're not, yeah. you're you're not you're not stealing. You're not getting rich. I mean, maybe like just like horniness, just like the excitedness of going getting around and running around with Batman. I mean, I guess the, I'll let that slide. I think there's that. So I don't think the text warrants this, but for whatever reason, I, I heard some people or one one person who was actually a, a very good reviewer of the book was like. Uh, indicated that this was like she was trying to figure out if Falcone was her dad. Um, I don't know if they're oh. accidentally reading that in because there's that we're going to be doing the Catwoman story later later on when in Rome. Maybe maybe there's some kind of revelation to that effect. Oh, um, I might be missing a piece then. Yeah, yeah. But if so, like because it is it, but the book should give us something. This should give us something. It should be in by itself intelligible. Um and with with her bopping around as Catwoman all the time, I I don't get it. But even even her like relationship with Bruce Wayne, like that dichotomy, like you get the impression almost that they're that they sort of know about each other, but are in deep denial of it or something. I I don't know. Like it's 
because there's a lot of the language is the same. Like she's like, I, I, I know places we can go, Batman. I know where places we can go, Bruce, you know? Um, and the same thing is when, uh, she nicks his face when he's Batman right. with her claw mm. and then goes, Oh, did you cut yourself? Say shaving Bruce. It, it's, it's like, it's, it's not, it's not subtext that they, they, they know who each other are. Yeah. Uh, but, and, but, but, it, but it's like, they don't want to, it's like the, the game of being superheroes together is too exciting for them. I'm putting that back into the horny bracket. Oh, sure, man. Yeah, no, it's definitely, um, they're the horniest couple in all of comics. Uh, and I love them for it. <laughs> I don't have a problem with that at all. No, I think that's the way it should it, be. Like, that's a, like, apple like pie. a real pervy undertone. Yeah, yeah. That's something Frank Miller understood. It's better with the mask on. Like he knew. Oh, no. no. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking nose. Um, yeah. <laughs> So, like, even though this thing's a goddamn mess, uh, I love it. And I love these year one takes on Batman villain. Like, this this whole story is the origin of Two-Face. And I don't think it really gives us... I think there's something missing. Like, I'm still waiting. Like, this is a good origin for Two-Face. But also, like, it doesn't explain why he is so worthy of the Batman Right. Other than the emotional connection here, like the sort of wound or scar that he represents. Um, Almost in, just like a maybe a failure represents sort of like a like a failure on Batman's end. That, yeah, that, but, that, that, that he that he is going to like, I feel like that's part of Two Faces DNA that mm-hmm. like he's a. He's a B lister among B listers. He's a B list villain in he he's like a a step below a, a bunch of B-list villains and the yeah. reason he gets to play ball with them is because i feel like there's a sense that batman will always pull punches because it's his fault oh that's really interesting um i gave him i yeah i like that but i like i don't emotionally i can't get on board cuz like my two face is uh is a tougher guy you know like he is mm. He's he is a, not equivalent to the Joker or the Penguin and stuff, but he's like he's up there, uh, which doesn't put him in the B the B listers. But like I see how he could be though. Like there's something pathetic about, as particularly this Harvey Dent, where like his wife's a maniac. Uh, he's like he's horribly scarred. Um, <laughs> I, he gets more respect in Dark Victory, I, I think. Like we get it, we get something a little oh, more, okay. a little more scary. Uh, and weird, uh, but yeah, getting, but it's still though, like a cool origin to, uh, Harvey Dent, who I think was kind of missing that. Uh, I, I don't know to the extent that was the case in 96, but like, I, I think that if anyone asked me what the origin of Two-Face is going to be from now on, like, this is it, you know, Jeff Loeb, you won, um, that this one fits into all the Batman mythos and it's, it's good poison ivy uh it like he he loves the batman villains and he he just has such a love jeff Loeb uh has has such a love for all this uh stuff and it, you know it just comes across and he used the right he used the right villains to not mm-hmm. have this go over the cheese ledge <laughs> the old cheese ledge <laughs> um, um all right i don't know how he achieved that but he did it um, yeah well, who would you? I, I think uh, Mr. Freeze. Yeah. Well. <laughs> yeah, you're right. <laughs> that's you coming break though. Up Mr. Freeze, you're in this shit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's interesting barometer because, like, I know because I I know in Dark Victory the sequel to this, like, Mr. Freeze does show up in one of the issues uh, just because no. I was good or whatever. <laughs> so I'm curious if you're. Uh, how that applies like oh fuck we're in this shit uh, <laughs> if we're gonna be fuck, if we're gonna get handed the manchego we're going to yeah. town. <laughs> i don't like um uh since we're on the topic like i don't like what happened to the fucking riddler in this story he got <laughs> he got fuck happened to him <laughs> that's shitty um, falcone's daughter his gigantic daughter was more menacing than him Oh god, that was weird. <laughs> there were so many weird things that happened. There was so much content 
it's such a big book and it's like like i don't know it was such a ride that that I didn't mind that it was so gigantic. Like it, 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 very, very. A lot of times when we're doing these these bigger run throughs on things like, mm-hmm. Lord, I'm just gonna be a dick and flip back to Sandman. You know, things mm-hmm. become a bit of a slog. But this is not. Yeah. This was not linear enough to to for you to get bored. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's funny. Isn't it? Yeah, you're right. You know, there's a lot of jumping around in time, and there's a lot of like like jumping between a, a lot of different types of scenarios. So you've got your superhero stuff. You got the Batman uh, outside of uh, Julian Calendar's um, Hannibal Lecter esque cell, and you got the light in the dark or whatever, and like in the Arkham, and then like just. To, it's just as likely that you'll turn the page and like three pages later, it's going to be like a domestic scene with Jim Gordon and his wife, you know, and, uh, or, or Bruce Wayne's on the run or whatever. Um, yeah, I'm just looking at Batman right now, menacing Falcone at the graveyard. Right. What, uh, what a nightmare to have that big monster come out from behind your graves. (laughs) He's so fucking big. Or it's like aiming a gun at you and, and he's not concerned at all. Yeah, you don't you don't think I could have taken that little gun away from that little man? <laughs> <laughs> Whoa, yikes! Fucking yeah. number one, Bruce. <laughs> yeah, that's good though. Like, and I love you know we we obviously we've been saying a lot of um, great things about Tim Sale, but you know zooming in on it, like his depiction of Wayne Manor is so, and and again not like I I'm gonna go out on a limb and say like a lot of this doesn't work as well without the coloring like everything's oh, just the, perfectly calibrated. you said it's atmosphere yeah. yeah yeah um like the, the figure like he draws figures really weird i'll i'll cop to that but at the same time he he captures emotional expressions like you you know what everybody's feeling uh there's a lot of acting contained in in these lines um and you know okay so he has a stylish stylistic tick you know like so does frank quietly in the sense that everybody looks like a sort of putty creature um but and here everything's um you know has a lot of character elements to it but also like these um kelly jones we've talked about this before this kelly jones level of like musculature on people particularly women like catwoman's just jacked <laughs> it's, oh yeah <laughs> it's crazy <Yeah. clears throat> um yeah well, the point yeah, you can't... These scenes are so great oh yeah let me find some uh the, the first one here come it, it's yeah. like <laughs> honestly and and you, you can't help but think yeah that's what he's doing yeah you know you can't resist me in that last scene yeah just takes her right in the garden there you just go. Giving it to her. Yeah. Now he's got fucking gross wooder ivies all over under his dress shirt. Oh yeah, that's right. When she, you know, if she... she could literally like zombify anyone she wanted, that'd be so problematic. Yeah. Well, that they is re- one of her powers or whatever. But really, really shockingly overstated it in this though. Yeah. No willpower at all from Bruce Wayne. Poison Ivy is one of those, like, if we ever do a character study one day, like, I I really want to look at Poison Ivy as, you know, because she's, like, obviously she's an ecological sort of figure. She's like a Swamp Thing kind of thing. Swamp or a race, thing, or, could, yeah. or a race Al Ghoul. You know, it's kind of the same motivation. But also, like, she's this seductress. Um, like, you're real, cla- like, a proper seductress, uh, almost a witch. Um, and yeah. You know, and just the way she's been sort of characterized and taken over. Um, I don't. I don't think she was originally supposed to be a lesbian. I have no idea. Um, but post uh, Batman, the animated series, and the you know, like I guess, I guess fan fiction led to this. Just these those adventures with um, Harley Quinn and uh, Poison Ivy from the cartoon. Suddenly, that just became a whole ship. And it, you know, eventually it turned into like a relationship between uh, even in the, the, you know, comics and TV and everything. It's just like, that's what this character is now. I just think that's a that's a fascinating transformation and, and like so many elements involved in that. So I'd, I'd love to get a chance to like further get into that. 
Um, oh, we can we can something. do some more poison ivy. Yeah. I don't, I don't know that I have had a lot of real like good run-ins with her stories, but, but no, yeah, but that's the a, thing. But I know there's a lot of them out there. Yeah, and then none of them are good. Even the Neil Gaiman story, like uh, there, there's one that he did for Bat- Secret Origins in the 80s or something like that. And it's you know it's Neil Gaiman-y. It's fine, but like I, I, even that something wasn't something's missed. Uh, like many of Batman's villains, it's their relationship to Batman that that is most important. Uh, you know, like m- makes them most vibrant and interesting. Um, and yeah, so like it's it's got to be a Batman story at the same time as, as it's an origin of the villains. And Jeff Loeb knows that uh, in this um, thing, you know, it's it is all about everybody's relationship to the, not everybody's relationship to the Batman, but yeah. Here comes Falcone's daughter too. Yeah, Catwoman's an absolute beast in this. Oh, and like his Selena Kyle's so hot, just like those like that that wild hair, you know. Um, when she's in her suit, she's just like this, like a menace, like a bodybuilder. Yeah. <laughs> um, I love these. Um, I like the I like the you know since we're on the villains, the uh, scarecrow. I like that design, and of course when he escapes from Arkham, uh, that two page spread unleashing the scarecrow like it's like he's on that like nightmare like like a nightmare um it's uh it's great it's fucking like well i don't know like it's such a weird moment to like pull out to a two-page spread and no one no one's <laughs> ever gonna give that to the scarecrow ever again but this is his finest moment uh just striding the earth like a god on the back of this <clears throat> literal nightmare Devil Steed, the only person was Christopher Nolan in that first Batman movie, I believe, gave him one of those. Gave him a little bit of props there. Right, right. Yeah, well, no one else had touched him in the movies up until that point. Like, am I wrong about that? That was... Uh, No, I'm pretty sure, yeah. Yeah, first tag at that. And he, uh, you know, they they cite influence. Uh, There's an interview at the beginning of my... uh, with, With David... or. David S. Goyer and and Christopher Nolan at the beginning um, of this collection that I have. It's like a back and forth between them about uh, the long Halloween. Um, and this showed up in in Batman Begins, like a, a, a lot oh, of them. So. My uh, my collected edition here has the the forwards from uh, Goyer. OK. Oh, but it doesn't have like the Christopher Nolan and him chatting. I find that surprising. No, I don't think so. No, oh, well, either way, uh, they're chatting about it. They're saying it's good stuff. Saying it's like a noir film. I think that uh, I think it's not. I think it's very noir, but it's not like a cohesive whole. Like maybe Red is a collection. It it kind of jars that it's so disjointed. Uh, but like it's you know it's a it has a cohesion, but it's still also a little. We've already talked about this. Like it's it's a little jumpy. Um, it's taking place, you know, like this. I don't know what this would have read like in individual issues, and whether oh, or not yeah. this variety would have got me through month to month. I don't know that I would have been super interested in that. I mean, maybe the art, the co- the covers, the covers and in, in the art would have probably had me hanging in there. Yeah, but we this was prime time for us, man. Like, uh, okay, well, I was like, what's on the what else is on the shelf as this is as this is coming out? So we've got we're in the one handed Aquaman era. Um, oh yeah, I was in, there. We're in the Kyle Kyle Reiner. Uh, they're bringing back um, Hal Jordan uh, after the final night sequence or whatever. But like, oh, so Astral City Astro City Confessions is coming out at the same time as this. Uh, but I think most significantly is like Jim Lee and the image crew, the Liefeld crew. This is when they were doing Fantastic Four, Captain America, Avengers, that kind of thing. Um, oh. You got you know, like Chuck Dixon's all over the Batman books at this point. Right. Like and it, it's it's that era. Like um, Warren Ellis isn't even really a major name yet. Like he's he's just starting to make a name for himself with uh, DV8. Um, so 
I, like, and this was a bit like this Wizard Magazine. I remember Wizard Magazine talking about this comic up and down, left and right, like while it was coming out. What's the mystery of of Holiday? And like, I haven't read this book until now, right? Like, I've I've I've, <laughs> <laughs> I, I've, uh, I've flipped through it, you know, like I knew about it or whatever. And like, and I I was like, oh yeah, that's probably a good one. Um, but I even remember I bought Dark Victory number one. When it came out, and I didn't buy any of the other ones. So this, I, think I this uh, probably, yeah, I can't, I can't, I can't lie to you either. I uh, yeah. I bought this and mm. it sat on my shelf, as do many of my things, until we review it through the podcast. <laughs> right. But um, but uh, my oldest daughter Maddie, she she um wanted to uh, watch the movie of this, the animated one. It's, yep. two, it's a two-part movie, and, and we put that on, and she was smitten with it. Um, and then I had to get her the second part, and, and it, that was I actually watched that before reading this. <laughs> right, right. <clears throat> How is it? And, and is now that you've done both, um, do you? Is there a major? Is it a, a pretty much play-by-play adaptation? Or yeah, yeah, it is. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That makes and it's, sense. And it's and it's very clean. And and well, true to like true to atmosphere, true to color, like they did a good attempt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't think you like. I I saw some of the just the stills of of it because I was looking. It, it just pops up, right? Yeah. Um, they, they're not doing a full Tim sale. Like I I don't think you. Can. No, 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 no. I I don't. Yeah, think yeah. You not not for not not to get a nice animation style. You can't do that. But but I I, I think, think they I, I think they I don't think they did it dirty or anything though. Like I I think it no. was a good I think it was a good adaptation. Yeah, I think you could like in a, in a 1970s 80s sort of animation world, you could probably like you know like if there was really good money, um, hand drawn, all that shit, weird coloring, smear effects, uh, you you could do it. Um, I, you, you know, why why you would do it? I have no idea. Like I don't know why I'm going down this road in my mind. Um, yeah. Okay, that's interesting. Uh, yeah, I wondered, but uh, it makes sense with Jeff. Jeff, I think that was my original thought: is that uh, Jeff Loeb's a screenwriter, right? And so, getting back to his writing style, he, like that that quote, that quote of Paul, Paul Schrader telling him like, "There's 50 things in a movie, and there's just 50 things, you know, not thing, you know, not anything else. It's just like you know, events and bit and bits and pieces, and then yeah. you like build a, and then you build around that." Um, I can't help but like think of, I couldn't help but go back when because I was almost I can't remember if I was finished the book when we when you, you said that out loud and then yeah, I couldn't yeah. help but think to myself fucking holiday kills mobster uh, Batman talks to Calendar Man <laughs> Calendar right, Man yeah. leads <laughs> Batman to Solomon Grundy so and I was like no <laughs> <laughs> you goddamn perfect spine bastard. That shit, that makes it like that's um, that's what fucking works though. Like you want to make sure that they're like I don't like Jeff Loeb's um writing generally. Although like like I said, like we really love Batman uh or or Superman um for all seasons. This was great. You know, I bet anything else we read from Jeff Loeb Tim Sale co- collaboration is is gonna have some sort of emotional moment so like it's something, gonna something service really yeah 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 at the same time like like the fuck i just i'm i know this is just repeating myself but like i really have to emphasize to anyone re- listening like this is a mess <laughs> like it doesn't feel like it has a smooth backbone um uh, but it does you know like it, it uh and it has it has like a consistent sort of thematic exploration of family uh you know like i'm pulling this from someone else but like the concept of balance um it it's you know played straight it's played ironically but it's like uh, all all throughout it it's it's a story about balance and uh in a, in the origin of two-face you know like it's it's it has some literary qualities that you're like fuck you jeff Loeb, fuck you and your literary <laughs> qualities what the fuck you doing uh, get the fuck out of here, writer of cable, my ass. 
Um, uh, like, like the way Thomas Wayne has never, he's never been a character. You, you really don't get a sense of Batman's dad, but like, I'll be damned if this book didn't give me a sense of Batman's dad, not his mom. Yeah. Uh, but like, you know, we, which is fine. Mom gets a lot of attention. It's like, everybody loves mom. Um, uh, but yeah, just like Thomas Wayne doing the surgery and like, I'd never seen my father at work. It was like magic and i know like of course that's not fucking beautiful prose or whatever but you're like oh i see you know like there's there's something contained in that like the like his father was also a fucking wizard um and 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 exceptional in in a sort of superhuman way um that's good stuff yeah especially when it's in in an attention to detail Mm mm-hmm like 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 that he was like surgically adept that way and uh, the, and like you say too it gave them it gave him a connection to the falcon family um yeah. it, it gave his dad uh, or and it gave you like assumptions about his dad as well um about thomas wayne that, that maybe he never it just never was tabled before except yeah, for not, except for would you think of that movie chap yeah <laughs> yeah right yeah hey, get sport. back <laughs> <laughs> yeah Take the wall. yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then batman being sad about it afterwards oh my dad yeah you want to like and that like people showed up like, like and pennyworth man alfred in, in depicted in this fucking picture like a plus this is an excellent alfred he's almost sort of alien um, like this alien wisdom creature, you know, floating around and just also, but also a father, also feeling like failure as a father. Um, but, you know, uh, Falcone is, he has like, it's, it's about his relationship with his son and his daughter and like his neglect of them and their desire to please him, uh, like their murderous desire to please him. Um, yeah, yeah, it's, uh. Yeah, it's, it, I don't know. I, there's there's only so many times I can say this. It's great. It's fucking great. <laughs> yeah. Oh, if yeah. You, I don't know. This is a. I. I don't know. I, I, I'm I'm trying to I'm trying to wonder how many times I've said this is up there. You know, this is up there. You got to read this. But but this is really yeah. this is really like the the glue is like in a in a comics experience and this is obviously one of my my big beefs that i cry about whenever we review books is just like an like a consistency of art Mm -hmm. when when you get a clean when you get a cover to cover consistency you've got someone that's at the table they're they're on board with the writer and and everybody is willing to play you know all the all the pieces are in motion the colorist everybody and then you get a you get a whole package yeah yeah um, a real fucking sequential art package where you're not going to be derailed uh, or, or 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 feel like what the fuck am i looking at now because i'm you know i'm having to endure like a like an artist change or anything that you don't get yeah. that this is it yeah. this is it it this was a big vision yeah well that's it like the, the that's that's exactly what it amounts to and and that's what's kind of remarkable about the jeff Loeb tim sale collaboration is i haven't read all their collaborative efforts i hadn't even read this right and but i've always admired them at a distance because like you you just like oh man the sauce these you guys just got the sauce <laughs> you were just like always <laughs> pumped. And like that's so weird you know um like i don't care for the stories they're telling but like god damned if i don't like them while i'm doing it um, <laughs> <laughs> i'm just like i don't really need that story but but they're like they, they kind of sort of beguile you and you're like actually maybe you know they're like poison ivy um. <laughs> oh no <laughs> um yeah there you have it i don't know I'm, I'm trying to think of some other things that i that i saw that i well the the acid to the face and i really liked the uh i like the solomon grundy uh two-face moment <laughs> Yeah, actually, that was... Her recited the poem back to him. Yeah, and he's like, I don't know, just like it's... Um, I think maybe that's a, that's a, that's a good one. That's a, an excellent moment. Because, like, it shows a sort of, like, what's the rest of it? Like, he sort of has a brilliant mind. 
um, who had, you know, memorized a bunch of, not that this is a, I guess it's a children's poem, but ask me the number of children's poems I've memorized. You're going to get a real small number. Um, and, and he just sort of subdues the beast that way, you know, and is that what you did? Did you die and come back? Can a man live two times? You know, like it's, it's, uh, it's smarter than you'd want it to be uh, coming from, from Jeff Loeb, you know, like, a, again, yeah. yeah. I think anyway. my favorite panel was when, when Bruce goes to Harvey's wife. Uh, when? Where, at the very end. At the very, 13, very end. Yeah. Where's your husband? This is dead. He's just fucking hiding out behind your furnace. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing down here, Batman? Yeah. Jesus yeah. Fucking Christ. Christ. That's I'd such a good pants. image, yeah, yeah, and it's oh, I know, okay, I know exactly which one you're talking about, like yeah, because I think I dog-eared it <laughs> in the book. I was like, oh boy, <laughs> he's like he's been like f- sort of folded into the background of the room, just the yeah. worst case scenario, yeah, worst just, case scenario. You don't just want standing that. there. Um, I yeah, yeah, I did find myself like yeah, okay, I finally found it now. I love that panel, honestly. Like that's. That's so fucking good uh, as a Batman image, you know, like with the furnace, the hellfire of like he's the chains and stuff like there's it's all the <laughs> all the fucking menace of Batman is just contained in that moment. Uh, the basement element element of it, the darkness. Um, Harvey, is that you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And she's like, she oh, and she's so frail and like almost blind. And he starts uh, like lecturing her and she's like. The best part is she's not really scared of him. No, well, because and I think that's why and I, it's a it's a good trick. But so the Gilda is one of the murderers. And, you know, like what do murderers what do we know about them? They're a superstitious and cowardly lot. They're afraid of Batman, you know, and but she 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 manipulates him with her innocence. Um, again, this doesn't help us solve them like they're. That's too much of a misdirection, I think, uh, to and also the fact that there's no other clues that she's a murderer. But we'll put that aside. Um, <laughs> but he yeah, it's like it's an emotion, emotional smokescreen, too. Like, there was no reason to think that she was. This level of a creature, right? Uh, I, the, the, actually, now that you there is something in that that. Um, I don't know. I like. I I guess like there's a there's an essay to be written out there about like Jeff Loeb's feminism or something, you know, like this or lack thereof. Um, this uh, this no, you know, this notion that that this quiet domestic woman is secretly and like expertly the most diabolical villain of all is this, you know, the silent innocent woman. Uh, it's. I think it's kind of cheap. But it's also like um, she's given to you throughout the book, too, I think, which is part of my annoyance is that like Gilda's Gilda's presented like Mm -hmm. many times throughout the book is given character development moments. And it's just you couldn't fucking put a clue. Yeah. No, not a one, you know, and and, uh, the big concern for me would be that there you didn't have it planned <laughs> well i i think we you know, like he almost he admits it almost you know like that you know we i had a, i had an idea i just like i i don't know i it, it's so shitty and sloppy that okay fine it does direct us to think that harvey dent did all these murders and that's what batman thinks and so like but we also we also feel like we never feel that batman's right in this story uh, even though we have no idea what's going on, we're like, Batman doesn't know what's going on either. He just thinks he does. Um, and I don't know. I don't think that I don't know how that makes it. A, doesn't make it a rewarding experience. It's just like, oh, yeah, Batman's a fucking dumbass. <laughs> and like none of us knew what was happening. Not even the hero. It's true. And it doesn't make it a like. That doesn't that also doesn't make it like, you know what I mean? I know I, know I really like this Batman that they did in here, but it, that doesn't mm-hmm. make a good Batman. To have, to have a a fucking 
story the size of a phone book where Batman's never correct in his detective work. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> He's menacing. He'll beat some people. You know, you know, cause some, someone got brought to justice at the end of this story, right? Yeah, like um, some lady. Some ladies got scared here and there. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, it's a problem. I and I and I am curious to discover whether or not they they like course correct later on. Uh, I'm a little worried about, and I don't know, but I'm worried that Dark Victory is gonna like give us the same fucking experience, and then and at that point I'm gonna have to start because I know how Hush goes, right? So do you. Uh, <laughs> and so and so you have to start thinking that like Jeff Loeb is just fucking incompetent and but operating at a high level. Which is remarkable, like a, a real achievement, just to be a like a grade A asshole, like up on <laughs> yeah. the trampies and just like putting on a show that everybody wants to pay a nickel for. Now, all we need is a little energon and a lot of luck. 